Arms swinging, knees bending, head bobbing, to no particular rhythm. You're either dancing or you have fleas. Call me a doctor. As soon as you hit the dance floor, the taunts begin. Is that all you got, Leia? Unfortunately, yes, that's all you got. Pour it on now. Who's in the house? Some guy who can't dance. That's who's in the house. It really is the Academy Awards for our business. It's sort of the, the showcase of everything we do. It's one of the most fantastic things is you can kind of, you know, be walking down the street and run into someone that you met from India or, or from Australia the year before, and you only see them once a year, and you see them here. Come on, I need an answer. If you're shipping internationally, you gotta use FedEx. Brilliant, Al. You're a real lifesaver, huh? <laughs> so then I said, if you're shipping internationally, you gotta use FedEx. You're so smart. <laughs> the first couple of days, you're looking through the long list, and that's everybody and their grandmother who wants to enter a spot. So it's, uh, it's a little, it's quite fatiguing, you know, and luckily this woman kept yelling, vote, vote, after each 30 seconds, which was really sort of a euphemism for, wake up, wake up. So I tell these guys, if you're shipping internationally, you gotta use FedEx. These guys have nothing, so I say, you ship it internationally, you, you gotta, gotta use FedEx. That's what I told him. And I think we all remember the time when Al here said... If you're shipping internationally, you've got to use FedEx. Bringing back sweet memories. Hey, window pane. Hi. Beautiful day. I think this year was uh, a bit disappointing. At having said that, there is still some stuff. Whatever the, the good stuff is bloody good. I'm Larry. Uh, what are you reading there? Paperback? Uh, yeah, a paperback. Yeah, paperback. It's a nice blanket. Sure looks comfortable. In my view, 80% of the work that gets submitted to Cannes has no business to be entered into any festival at all. Uh, the, the whole festival stays afloat thanks to a lot of mediocre work being entered, which funds the excellent stuff, the remaining 20%. People sort of seem to think that clients are sort of aliens, you know, and that they have nothing to do with it. And I, I, I found that, you know, clients I've worked with have wanted to see their work do well and get celebrated as much as anyone else because at the end of the day it helps their course. Well, it certainly sends a strong signal to everyone at the agency. When your client is here at Cannes and they're, and they're celebrating the work and they're envious and they want to win. I can't get this. Are we rolling? <laughs> Hope we can get this. Our participation at this year's festival reinforces our strong commitment to marketing and the marketing and advertising industry and our dedication to developing and recruiting the top creative talent from around the world. What's my line? All right, I'm all right, I'm all right, I'm there. Hello, I can do one more. Can I do one more take? I think people come here to relax and meet each other and talk about the work. They don't want to go to client meetings at 8 in the morning. You can't actually discount that there has to be work done here. I mean, that's what makes this festival important, you know, that people can kind of come together and you can, I mean, global networks can have all of their people in one place. And if you can get some clients in on that too, you know, like, and have a good discussion, there are far worse places to be working. Uh, client agency relationships are delicate things. They're like marriages, right? You know, and, and and nobody wants, you know, nobody wants their wife or husband or another having lunch with someone else. You know what I mean? So it's 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 they, they don't really wanna 
I don't think, generally speaking, they want to publicize that, hey, we're here and, you know, there are, there are a thousand agencies here and we're here too. What do you have there? A plane, ma. A plane giant. Ah, a plane. And this? They think they have a plane. <laughs> and I think all eyes are on them, you know, in the sense of because they are the ones who are coming here and all the guys, the top notches sitting back home are going to come back and say, all right, so give us all the lowdown on whatever happened there. Matias, this avión has to be tomorrow in Rome at 10.35. There is a lot of people who need to travel and there is a lot of people who are waiting for it. They all need to get that avión. I don't think clients know why they're here. I think clients are trying to figure out what is it about our business that's changing and where is it going. I don't think they have the answer. Impossible is an effect. It's an opinion. You've got different countries with different cultures then you know, there's going to be all sorts of different sort of women's role in society will be different, you know, um, and, and that will affect the advertising as well. The whole independent thing is funny because everybody always, ha everyone always sells out. Music artists do, artists do, and it's just what your definition is. I think we have a really narrow definition of selling out. It's like if you get in with the man, you know what I mean? Maybe you're just getting in with the wrong man. It's sort of disastrous when you think about it, but these agencies have all become part of immense holding companies. And so, you know, actually it matters not as much who wins because 10 agencies are within the same holding company, you know, so they're all sister or partners in some way. And it's become impossible for little independent agencies to stay alive. Get closer without getting closer. I started in a, a small local agency and then we partner with Leo Burnett and I have not less freedom now at all. What I have is bigger client, bigger opportunities, bigger budgets and also I have the spirit, I mean coming from, from, from a small agency in Spain and now becoming global creative director of one of the biggest networks in the world. It's a dream, I cannot achieve staying alone in Madrid. The industry are now run by Wall Street, whether we like it or not. Yes, they are independence shop uh, still uh, in many, many uh, markets, but it's coming a cycle. Later, they'll be scooped up. That's, 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 uh, it's finance. I sold uh, our agency several years back, and now we're owned by publicists. And for us, it's been very helpful because it's, uh, we are based in New York and it's helped us to create uh, a global presence for many of the brands we work on are global, so we work through our sister agencies. And it's, uh, it's sort of like David and Goliath, you know, we can go in there with our creative firepower and uh, have the support of the whole network. Coming around the curve, she's playing all her steam and power and straining every nerve, oh, get on board, get on board, get on board. Five years back in India, uh, the amount of uh, multinationals which came in into India were, say, if they were, say, 10%. Today, there are about, what, 60%, you know? Now, what happens is, with all those companies coming in, 
all the international big guys walking into the country, you're getting the Indian people, the Indian, um, say, what entrepreneur or anybody, is, is getting very badly affected because they are just getting washed out out of the market. 1-800-TBS-FUNNY. Hey, um, I just saw a man sit on one of my buffalo wings. Is this funny? Were those wings fried or saucy, sir? Real saucy. I'm telling you, you're talking to the wing king right here. Describe the stain, sir. 65% of the industry is tied up in six agency networks. So, you know, you, 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 in order to change the industry, in order for it to get greater utilization, it's going to take time. It looks like a, um, a Rorschach test, right? I'm, I'm saying two dogs kissing. A ladle. A ladle. Can you place the stain for me, sir? Left buttock, right buttock? Hey, man, I'm not getting into all of that. Is he with people? Uh, yeah, he's with uh, four hiking? Japanese men. Clients. Can you edge the phone closer? I'm going in. Where are you going? Don't go. Come back in. This man is an idiot. Let us go fly fishing. Get that? I certainly did. Yeah, How's his demeanor? That's not the only time I scored that oh, day. Oh, he thinks he's the man. OK, let's review this then. Saucy wings, cocksure, goodbye. Contract. Yep, we're gonna go ahead and give you a pretty funny on this one. Really? Oh, wait, wait, you're calling from Buffalo. Added irony. That bumps it up to pretty darn funny. Pretty darn funny! <laughs> whether it's part of a multinational uh, a company or whether it's just an independent, I mean, the work is the work, and the people who work for that uh, company are the ones that are demonstrating good creative or bad creative. And being part of a network doesn't mean to say that you're gonna do better work. When are you going to get out of here? In a while. I got to get back. I love you, Mama. I love you too, baby. They had five things that you're supposed to consider, i.e. that women now um, are making much more money. They are 80% of the buying decision. Um, that women are very into having their sexuality explored in advertising in a funny or humorous way and also just being, also playing into the fact that women are emotional creatures, but doing it in an intelligent way. Get on, okay. Okay, Mike, I know you think your truck is totally sick, but this is what I think of your precious 4x4 hang out all day with your stupid friend's truck! Push it! Humor, you know, sex, emotion, all of those are places where people, advertisers have not used those areas or positioned their message with those areas in an appropriate way. So when it comes to, you know, in, in the whole area of, of sexuality, in the past it's been, you know, woman as object, and now it is about woman in control. What do you think I'm going to do when they say women shit box? Yeah, that's right. Rumble, young girl, rumble. It was really wonderful that there were six women on the jury. I found a lot of the work last year was very male biased and had a lot of fraternity humor and some scatological jokes. And we tried to avoid that. You know, if there was an option of, well, here's a funny spot, but it's toilet humor, and here's a funny spot, but it uplifts you in some way, why not go in that direction? Why do something demeaning if you don't have to? In my country, women in general uh, were never kind of given that space outside the four walls of the house. When women started coming out, advertising was still the last thing, you know, last place where women would be. See, I would say that in Hong Kong, um, it's, it's a very sort of equal opportunity sort of market and a lot of women are in strong positions in, in business or in even politics you know as as other countries it's a, so it's a fairly mature and sophisticated advertising market yeah, I think one of the reasons that uh, the industry has a, has a slightly distorted way of communicating with women is the fact that there are not many senior women in the business. Certainly in the UK, there's a, a notable lack of, of senior creative people uh, and senior account people too. It seems to be a very male-dominated industry, which I think is a very bad thing. I'm Larry. 
Uh, what are you reading there? Paperback? Uh, yeah, a paperback. Yeah, paperback. Bollocks. It's no accident that the, the uh, UK advertising regulations book is very thick. Uh, and also that the UK advertising is much admired around the world. I think those two things are connected. Regulations are a good thing for the creative soul. They can be very annoying to have to work around, but in working around them, your work gets better. And my, my nickname for the regulators are the, the mothers-in-law of invention. They force you into smart thinking. But Uncle James, Mummy said to take me to the hairdressers. Ah, oh, where's the money? I'll have a bash myself. I'm back. Mm. Hello there. Hi. What happened? Terrible hairdresser. Leave it to me. I'm just waiting for the manager to get back, and then, what is he in trouble? Look, some idiots cut my niece's hair. Yes, please. There's one other thing I need you to do, though. OK, let me explain. I know this haircut has nothing to do with you, but my sister is watching outside, and I want her to think that you did it. So you sort out this terrible mess for me, and I will pay you double, OK? You're very, very nice people. Thank you. At a festival like this, some countries might have a little bit more of an unfair advantage. <laughs> Because when you look at a country like European countries where, you, do you remember growing up, you would see all those shows, you know, the best ads in the world, and they'd have the most like salacious, racy, you know, off-color humor and all of these things, and you're like, you don't get ads like that in Canada. Well, sometimes we're being challenged on the commercials that we produce in Canada as being edgy or cheeky, right? You know, compare them to what you see in Brazil or, or, or French commercials. We're, we're nowhere there as far as what they do and what they either are, we, they find normal, but we would have to find a way to get away with it. In the dreams that you dream of once in the love above. That's part of the problem North America has. We're so paranoid and overregulated, you can't actually have fun anymore. Bluebirds fly. special about Japan is that it's totally different from North America is that it's, uh, it's like there's only one race and and a mono culture and monolingual so that uh, people's behavior or thoughts or idea or especially communication is is based on the same understanding The biggest thing about India is that it's, it deals with 21 languages in India, right? And 21 languages which are completely different from each other. So while there is absolutely no commonality in the lingo, uh, there is a whole lot of commonalities in values. So it's, it's amazing to get the balance right and uh, use cultural traits across and make it funny at times. The whole of Asia was affected. We've had SARS, you know, the retail's been down. Really hard times. And I think somehow it's, it's sort of had a, an interesting effect on the advertising because it's almost like people don't care anymore. They're not so precious about, you know, presenting the sort of things they want to show that are sort of um, more glamorous. It seems to have relaxed the creativity. <laughs> I'm
Morocco is an Islamic country, so um, you don't play with sex. Pui, I came to see the Japan one. Pui, so good. Ah, it has a shark that is a child. That doesn't disturb me. Because uh, I don't think that for making great advertising, uh, you, you have to do jokes on sex to take the interest of uh, the audience. An idea, if an idea is so strong, that is media neutral, that is ethnic group neutral, <laughs> that is language neutral, uh, and then based on humanistic, you know, like fear, love, you know, uh, hunger, for example, is the execution, the implementation, that need to be done a little bit differently because of different culture, background, ethnic group, language. All, all that thing to me is, is very basic. You just have to have the core idea first. Well, goodbye to media television. Uh, not sure where you're going, but wherever you are, I hope you're well and uh, we'll be thinking of you. Uh, I think that each time we miss a, a, a program like this, we're missing something important. And I'm, that's very sad news for me. I, 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 you deserve the best for the future, but and thanks for what you did so far. As an entrepreneurial company, an individual that uh, you, you've performed uh, an excellent service over those 12 years. and. I don't know the reason why it's going bye-bye, but maybe there's a way in which we could start it up again. It's a pity. <laughs> no, it wasn't good. I just say when one door closes, a window opens. The people from Media TV who have come and talked to us have known more about us and our business and, and why what we're doing is important and different than almost anyone else we talk to. So I, I hope that I hope that um, I hope that they use their talent somewhere else because they're very very good at what they do. Goodbye and good luck for the future and welcome to Hong Kong. <laughs> hope to see you out there. As the Americans say, there's a beginning and an end to everything, and maybe this is just the middle. And uh, I reckon you guys will be back. Then we meet Mr. Media TV. Bharat Mezbar. Bharat Mezbar. See you.